Hello, Matt. Uh, thanks for coming over to GeoBiz. Uh, uh, it's a pleasure hosting you here. Uh, Matt Filton, uh, President, Data Story Consulting. Uh, we have him here in the studios today. Uh, Matt, uh, I would like to first ask you, what is the story behind Data Story? How did it all it, begin? Yeah, it's great, great to be here. Thank you. Um, the story behind Data Story, I, I've been working in GIS for about 20 years. Mm -hmm. and. I previously worked in state and local government for um, Towson University in Maryland, and our clientele, like like much of the GIS industry, was state and local government. And um, we worked with a variety of um, different types of agencies. And about eight or nine years ago, I got a call from a commercial real estate company mm -hmm. that uh, McKenzie Commercial Real Estate in in the Baltimore Washington market, and they said, "Hey, you work at a university, and we need someone to make maps for real estate. Do you, can you recommend anybody?" and I started taking their requirements. And as I heard what they were up to, I got personally intrigued by that because in my many years of GIS, I had not really seen the technology applied well in the space of commercial real estate. Mm -hmm. And so I put my hand up, I joined that team, and interestingly, I left uh, the comforts of state government um, in the fall of 2008, right when the whole economy right before the whole economy crashed I down. Know. But um, what was interesting about it is I became a secret weapon for this real estate company who yeah. needed to make really, really smart decisions. And uh, a couple of years in, folks started asking us for, they said, we love what you're doing with GIS and with this technology. Uh, we don't have a specific real estate transaction in Maryland, but can we connect with you and can you help us out? And we did some one-offs of that. And very quickly we realized that there was a huge market for uh, businesses to tap into the power of GIS and um, and so we spun data story out as a new company about uh, three years ago uh -huh. okay so how do you how are you enabling businesses especially I think uh, real estate is your forte that's where you have started how are you enabling uh, uh, organizations and companies make better decisions using data yeah so it, it often um, starts or involves a real estate decision but Oftentimes it gets into marketing or just long-term strategy about where a company might, might want to grow. And the way we do it um, in, the, in the broadest sense is we help them see the story in the data. Mm -hmm. So our name, Data Story, uh, is not about us necessarily telling stories. It's about us revealing the story that's already there uh, in their customers or members or donors or employees um, and how that story of those individuals relate to the story in the market and through the power of GIS by layering everything together, we help business leaders uh, see the data a little bit more clearly. And so with each layer, it's like a click of a lens getting clearer and clearer uh, so that they can make a better, a better decision. Considering that uh, data today is multi-source and multi-format, uh, how are you actually trying to connect data to people, to places, and also bring out uh, outcomes uh, uh, with that? Yeah. Well. There's a couple of buckets that we pull um, uh, in terms of the data sources, and it often starts with the organization. They have some internal business data that maybe is in a database or a spreadsheet, um, but they've never really looked at it spatially. Uh, and so you know, we start by mapping, mapping that, and then pull in from a couple of other buckets of data, if you will, um, including uh, we're a business partner with Esri. Uh, we use their uh, demographics and market potential data. Uh, and so when we look at those people vis-a-vis that market data, we can geo-enrich and learn a lot about them. Mm -hmm. uh, we also can layer in very uh, detailed um, data, we call it hyper-local data from government, um, that world that I used to play in, and I know there's a lot of really great data out there. So we might be able to say, here are your customers, um, here's what we know about them, uh, and then here's some zoning or parcel ownership or tax credit areas, um, this data that exists within uh, local government. And we bring that all together um, into, um, in our case, an Esri platform. Okay, so how do you address uh, the data gaps or the data needs your customers would require? Not all data would be available with them. So uh, how do you fill those uh, data gaps required for the analytics? Yeah, there's, um, our clients are often surprised there's a lot more data out there than they, they know of. Um, okay. One of my late night hobbies is hunting for data on <laughs> open, uh, open source uh, data sources um, and some great commercial third party sources as well. Um, but where there's a gap, maybe they don't know about their uh, customers, for example, uh, and where they could find more of them, uh, we would, we would geo-enrich and as we, as we layer them together, we can um, actually derive some new, new insight, which then often leads to a better question that we're hearing from them 
uh, and we continue to focus the lens. Okay. So you only hunt for data, available data, or are you also trying to create data for yourself? We, uh, we don't create too much new data. Uh -huh. um, I think we're more like the, uh, we've been described as an artisan chef um, that puts data together, um, much like a chef puts ingredients into, a, uh, uh, into fine cookware to create a nice dish. Uh, we do that with a lot of the data that's already there, but the, the difference is many people don't know that the data is there or they don't know how to access it. Uh, and what we're finding, it's an amazing time uh, of technology to, to get at that and bring it in and aggregate it together very quickly. Okay, so you're doing an aggregation or also analyti analytics and also um, uh, creating the business uh, outcomes uh, so that the better decisions are taken uh, for the clients, right? Right. So uh, how do you really enable your clients seamlessly uh, uh, to integrate this, uh, uh, your, uh, sorry, um, did your data solution seamlessly into their work uh, processes, yeah. their business processes. Sure. Because um, each company, each uh, uh, sector has a different work uh, a process, business process. How are you enabling Yeah, they them? do, and it's um, it, each project we do, each organization, it's, it's very different. Um, and so we've, uh, we've, we've learned to ask a lot of questions about that up front. And what's, I think, most exciting for me, seeing the history of the uh, of GIS technology is that these last couple of years, it's gotten very uh, much easier to integrate um, and uh, connect different systems and different data sources. Uh, as I mentioned, we're an Esri business partner and uh, we are one of a handful that has a uh, specialty designation with ArcGIS Online. Mm -hmm. And I find ArcGIS Online to be a tremendous way to um, layer in a map-based perspective for uh, not just analysts, but the executive, the operations um, in leaders, um, all sorts of diverse people high up in the organization. Um, we often talk about how we are uh, in, a, in a new way bringing GIS into the, the C-suite, the executive suite. Um, and so what we're really doing is, is layering Esri's platform on top of these existing systems. And, uh, and as you may know, they have a lot of connections into uh, other enterprise, whether it's CRM or BI. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but surprisingly, it often starts out as a, as a very simple um, spreadsheet <laughs> based approach. True. And then it, it grows because uh, our clients learn to ask the better questions. And, uh, and so we have a very um, measured approach of how we implement GIS for them. Okay, what's unique about Map Dash, the business dashboard uh, from Data Story? I think what's unique about the dashboards that we create is that um, we can uh, you know, we can mash up data from a lot of different sources. Um, mm -hmm. So again, it's a thread in this conversation here, but uh, when we show what sometimes feels fairly simple to me um, that we can overlay parcel data with their, uh, an organization's leasing data with uh, projected growth uh, with the competition and put that all in one view, uh, that's what um, over and over again has a big wow factor for folks because they historically had to go to many different tabs in their browser or many different systems um, and they're able to get it all in one place um, which helps them save a lot of time and it helps them answer maybe the smaller questions really quickly so that they can spend more time on the bigger questions um, and also they're spending less time um, hunting for data and more time using it. Because that's exactly. what they should be doing as a leader is making a decision, not um, trying to find the data and spend most of your time doing that and then you have to make a quick decision. We, we put that on its head by having it all at their fingertips. Considering that uh, th there is too much of proliferation of sensors and data as well these days, so how uh, are the uh, time, uh, time uh, uh, taking uh, for uh, collecting the data or getting access to data is increasing over a period of time? What is your experience in the past few years? Uh, in terms of some of that, real, some of the real-time data, uh, any data for that matter, any geospatial data. Yeah, again, um, I think as an industry, we've done a good job with uh, standards um, and having things uh, being able to quickly find um, and integrate in, and um, some great technology that that allows us to do that. So, I mean, we've certainly seen that get easier and easier. Uh, we might put together a. Uh, a story map about an area uh, and we can quickly layer in a social media feed or something like that to be able to just add a little bit more clarity to that particular area. Okay, uh, another question I was wanting to ask you is, you have started with real estate definitely. Uh, which other sectors is data story concentrating at this point? 
We, well, a couple of areas that we're finding and we're, we're gaining some traction and seeing a lot of interest. Um, one that maybe rises to the top is healthcare organizations um, that are growing. Um, as you know, the healthcare landscape is changing a lot. And we've seen, um, we've engaged with a lot of clients who uh, maybe started out as a strong local brand, uh, maybe a physical therapy or eye care or dermatology practice or some specialty practice. And their couple of locations have done very well. Uh, and outside investors have identified that group of doctors and practices as an area to grow. And um, they've invested in these companies and said, um, expand your brand into different regions, uh, other states, really across the US. Um, and whereas those physicians have been able to grow their practice locally because they know the local market, when they get into new markets, um, they have to rely more and more on a data-driven approach. Uh, and the investment team wants to make sure that it's a very intentional and measured growth and as fast as possible and as smart as possible. So we've uh, inserted our solutions into that mix so that um, the, the, the market strategy, which eventually ends in a real estate transaction, but just the market strategy of who are our patients, where are there more of them, um, that has been tremendously helpful for these uh, really, you know, investors, physicians, operations, people that, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, I, you wouldn't have thought um, would be interested or wanting to access GIS, but um, in our case, we're able to give them a dashboard that they have up in a, in a board meeting and say, you know, let's look at this part of the country and this part of the country because um, it's really ripe for our target demographic, for example. We've also seen a really, um, a lot of growth in the senior living space um, as developers are looking for uh, kind of building demand or building to meet the demand of a growing and aging demographic in the U.S. here. Um, the ability to look at what markets have the highest need for senior living, for example. Um, we've put together and we've done a lot of modeling to say here are the areas that based upon demand and supply in the market, um, here's the areas that are the most right for you to focus on and, and grow. And obviously there's a lot more due diligence, but we help get them to those, uh, that short list much, much quicker. Okay, whether it is uh, uh, healthcare or whether it is uh, senior living, everything is, I think, somewhere really connected to the real estate uh, uh, kind of a scenario where uh, trying to identify the right kind of locations and uh, right kind of uh, places for this kind of uh, uh, living. So any other uh, sectors uh, uh, that you're uh, also looking? Yeah, well, um, interestingly, oftentimes that real estate decisions, once you open a location becomes a, a marketing, uh, you know, an marketing. engagement and operations kind of uh, decision. And we've done a fair amount of work with, um, uh, as in partnership with say architects doing master planning for a school system or a large, um, you know, a large organization with a campus that might want to um, understand a couple of things. Their market, which is kind of a real estate decision, but I guess every location issue is a <laughs> kind of related to real all estate. All but also um, what it's spun into, we worked with a number of schools uh, and universities that want to understand mm -hmm. who are our students, um, how can we increase enrollment. Uh, we've worked with uh, private schools and, and just I think because of the strain on the economy, enrollment has been trickier. So to be able to profile their current and historic students and say, here's who they are, here's their lifestyles, here's what they like, here's what they're interested in, and where can you find more of them? It helps not only target their marketing message, but it changes their marketing message because it's interesting to see who those students are. It's also interesting to see who they are not um, and where a certain lifestyle or demographic segment um, that might be ripe for that particular private school or university, uh, they're not reaching them. And if they just uh, adjust their message a little bit, they will. Um, also similarly, like understanding alumni and who are alumni and where are they, um, we can learn so much about where a person lives because there's all this other data that we can geo-enrich about it. So that's an example of how we've gone beyond real estate and really helping people with a kind of a marketing strategy and an engagement from a, you know, enrollment or uh, we've worked with some nonprofits as well who want to understand who's donating money, who are our best donors um, of either time or money, um, and what can we learn about them? Well, we can learn a lot based upon how they spend their money. We have all that data um, as layers, 
Um, and if you understand a person's spending habits, you understand their heart, and you can align your nonprofit mission with the right people, and again, engage them in, in new ways to, to help grow and support that mission. Okay, uh, data analytics, as you know, is, is a large opportunity. Definitely location and uh, where element is one aspect of it, but it goes much, much beyond uh, mm -hmm. uh, simple location. How is uh, a data story capturing this opportunity? You're based only in the uh, in the U.S. or going beyond uh, the U.S. markets? Yeah, we have uh, most of our work has been in the U.S. We've done some uh, internationally. Um, we've begun to do more. We uh, helped a um, a uh, uh, building materials uh, importer um, from South America identify which markets to come into um, at a high level s uh, strategic perspective. So I think um, that's certainly a growth opportunity for us. Uh, you know, our our niche, I feel like, is bringing GIS to people who um, didn't know it was there or didn't know the power of it. Uh, we talk a lot about um, invisible questions. Um, invisible questions are those questions you didn't know you could even ask because you didn't know that the data uh, existed and was out there. And in the same way that um, 10 years ago, if somebody said, is there an app for my phone that could help me train for a 5K while listening to my favorite music and being accountable to my friends? That was an invisible question 10 years ago because it there made no sense. Now that we have uh, a platform that we can um, ask that question into, those questions make sense and they open up new questions. So in terms of how we uh, will grow and, and capitalize on all the data and big data that's out there, I think it's helping people see things from a new perspective and, and making these invisible questions more visible so that they're asking better questions uh, and, and, and differentiating their business by, by working smarter and, and different than how they did in the past because it's just a different, uh, it's a different business economy these days. Okay, my one last question to you. Yeah. Uh, if you have, to, what is unique about data story? Because there are umpteen number of companies today to provide location analytic solutions. How do you present data story to be unique? I think, um, I think our brand is fairly unique in that, and we've gotten a lot of feedback on this, um, and I say this as a GIS geek <laughs> of many um, years past, but um, I think the business world doesn't really understand um, all that's possible of GIS technology, and I think GIS professionals don't always understand how the business world works. I'm making a blanket statement, it's starting to change, but um, one of the things that we are really um, in, the, in the gap is translating, uh, and it's painful sometimes, because we have to explain complicated things like why the data doesn't line up because of a map projection issue or something very complex, but we also have to translate it to um, actionable, or as we often say, decidable data, uh, so that somebody can, at the end of the day, make a very quick financial decision about it. Our, our niche also seems to be on the, um, uh, the smaller businesses. You know, big businesses have been using this technology for many years. Uh, I think my comment about the, the two different worlds um, becomes more and more true as the business gets smaller. Smart. So um, having grown from a small real estate company uh, that was very much that case, not knowing all that's possible, uh, we've become translators of making this great, great technology um, even more relevant into a business um, terminology oriented world and we've, we've liberated some of the great things into uh, a, very, a very new perspective um, for, for business leaders who don't have a lot of time to worry about how it works, they just want it to work. I think you're right, you're uniquely placed uh, in terms of connecting the businesses and the GIS as professionals and, uh, and uh, wish you all the success uh, in your endeavors. Thank you so much for being on GeoBiz. Yes, thank you. Thank you.